September. Beautiful days, cool nights. I love this time of year. What could be better than enjoying this weather and the outdoors, but with a friend? Fellow YouTuber and fishing fanatic, Tim Flagler, has traveled up from New Jersey to join me for a five day fishing trip to beautiful Algoma. Our goal, besides enjoying the wonders of the region and maybe some fly time, is to help Tim catch his first big smallmouth bass on a fly. That is, if the weather will cooperate. Then we just might get it done. Stay with us to find out. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, Road trip with a friend, combined with fishing. Does it get any better? Not to me. For months, my friend Tim Flagler and I have been planning on a fishing trip, but we weren't sure if the border would be open by September, but thankfully it was. Tim drove up from New Jersey, stayed overnight, then the road trip began early. Lots of time to talk fishing, fly patterns, and much, much more. Our destination is my favorite drive-to location, Algoma Country. We've become friends by collaborating with our respective YouTube channels. Tim and his wife Joan have built a wonderful fly tying channel that is an incredible resource for fly fishers. Tim is also a featured speaker and instructor at fly fishing shows across the USA. Plus, he participates in many Facebook events. Every month, Tim and Tom Rosenbauer actually have an online fly tying competition, which reaches a massive audience of fans. Tim even honored me by joining one of my YouTube live events this past winter. Tim had once told me that he'd never caught a trophy smallmouth bass on a fly, so I needed to change that. And there's no better region in Ontario to take Tim, then Algoma. This is a place where I've caught so many giant smallmouth bass, it's hard to remember them all, so my confidence level was high. After several hours of driving, we finally arrived. For years, I've wanted to stay at Bruce Bay Cottages and Lighthouse, but it's always fully booked. Ideally located just off the Trans-Canada Highway, and with the epic views of both Bruce Bay and Lake Huron, this is the ultimate cottage location. A special feature of this unique destination is that you can even book the lighthouse to stay in. How cool is that? Their comfortable cottages are perfect for Tim and I for the next few days. We met with owners Pat and Larry, who showed us to our cottage. After unpacking and a quick dinner, Tim and I settled in for the night. We were tired after a long day of driving, but yet anxious for the next day's fishing. After a hearty breakfast and several big cups of coffee, we jumped in my truck and drove to a nearby lake.
This region of Algoma is fantastic because there's so many quality lakes and even rivers that possess good populations of smallmouth bass. Tim and I took our time rigging up the rods and loading the boat. As we prepared our gear, I was watching the wind in the lake as it seemed weather conditions were not quite as predicted. In fact, the wind gusts were picking up and I had a feeling that our time in this particular lake would be short. Despite the concerns about the changing weather, we launched the boat anyways. started by casting to visible structure along the edge of the lake. But it soon became apparent that the fish were not there. So what Tim and I are doing, it's kind of unorthodox for many people who like to bass fish, is to think we're not fishing to structure, we're actually in the middle of the lake. But the, this is where the bass are. They're on the smelt. And this happens in lakes where there's bait fish as well and they get balled up in September, and this is what happens this time of year. And what the bass will do is, uh, they're basically like wolves around a, a caribou um, herd, and they're just gonna pick off stragglers, or they'll go in and attack the bait fish or the smelt. And what we're doing, uh, unfortunately, you know, it's so deep here, it's 30 feet on average. What we're gonna do with, to get these suspended fish, which, you know, most of the hunting uh, smallmouth are gonna be from about 12, 13 feet down, all the way up to about five feet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be casting out these sinking lines, intermediate lines with uh, weighted flies, uh, short leaders, and basically swing the fly through. And that's what I just did a cast out to the side, swing it through, and then strip it. Ideally, we'd have a, a water anchor, but we don't have any. You can see the breeze is a little faster than what we hoped, but I think if we come back here, uh, Tim and I will do what he had recommended because he's got a lot of experience in the saltwater world and just put a couple paint pails over the side or some white buckets, one in each end and let them slow us down because we're going a little bit quick. Tim, well done. First fish of the day. And out here, open water, where people don't expect to find a bass. I got the net. What do you think? Two pounds? Mm, maybe not quite. Maybe not quite? Maybe not quite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping, but I, uh, I got a pretty good look at him. And that big? That's, that's a pretty decent bass there, my friend. Yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's getting bigger as he gets closer to the boat. Um, oh. I'd say that's three pounds. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> How about that for his first fish in Algoma? That's that Murdich minnow. Look at that. So Tim, how did that fish hit? Like, how did you feel it? Felt a tap and then another tap in heavy weight and uh, then it was on. I, I don't know whether it was, you know, missed on the first shot or whether it was another fish, um, but yeah, sure felt good. <laughs> and I think that point I showed you goes all the way out there and those seagulls will sit there and they'll, they'll go in the air and circle and then they'll start crashing down because they'll see the, the bass literally churning. It's like stripers. Yeah, yeah, or bluefish or, yeah. When they, that's how it is. And I'm going over a, an absolutely massive bait ball right here. And we're in 37 feet and the bait ball's at 15 to about 12.
No, I, I, I like fishing um, whenever I'm fly fishing from a boat, whether it's a drift boat, uh, you know, a flats boat in salt water, or, or uh, like we're doing here for smallmouth, uh, fishing in bare feet. I can feel the line, and so I'm, I'm not getting tangled as much around my feet or around my shoes, you not know, around the laces. And if you're stepping on the line with shoes on, you can't feel it. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll fish in bare feet as, as long as I can stand it uh, going into the colder months. As the day wore on, the wind picked up and the fishing turned off. Lucky for us, one of the amazing things about this region is the plethora of accessible fishing. So we packed up and headed to another lake for the afternoon. That's the beauty of this region. If the fishing is not great in one location, then just pull your boat and head to another destination. There are lots of choices all within an hour's drive. So, so Colin, you said you're taking me de to some shallower water, some rocky stuff. Um, I, what I did was I'm gonna, just to make casting a little easier with this wind, I switched over to a, a floating line and I've got about, I guess about six feet of, of a leader on here. And uh, this uh, Scotty's McFly, I'm gonna just try to chuck it up in there and you know, on the bank and then pull it out through that shallow rocky stuff. And ho hopefully we can dig something out of there, you know, come out between the rocks. Go a little farther, give it a couple more pulls and more than that. Okay. Because sometimes, like I said, there's a ledge. A little further off? Yeah, yeah. we're in 10 feet here, there's a ledge that comes okay. out. And they'll come up from the ledge. Right underneath that tree, there's some nice rock there and a little bit of a drop. Let's fish. There we go. Nice. I just saw your line move and it was a fish. Oh, it's a nice fat one. Let me back out away. Keep tight to him there, Tim. Yeah. Look how dark he is because of this dark water. Nice. There we go. Now that. Come out of nice. nowhere. Beautiful, Scotty McFly. beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful fish. They're very, very dark in here. Yeah, it sure Hunt. is. Yeah. There. there we go. Fish on? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a bass too. It's a good one. Let me get you away from the. Just control him for a second. Yep. That's him. Let me get us away. Ugh. You off? Yep. Oh. On the jump. That was a good fish too. Yep. That was uh that was at least two, three pounds. It was tight, man. Yeah. <sighs> Well, you know something? That, that's one of the things with barbless, you're going to lose fish, right? Especially on the jumps. On the jump, yeah. Yeah, he, he was as tight as can be. Though the fishing was tough, we did have a great day in the water. Another beautiful day here at Bruce Bay on the edge of Lake Huron. After a delicious breakfast, Tim and I went out by the lighthouse to take in the view and I had a chance to speak with Patricia Patterson about the history of this bay and its importance to fishing. 
Our resort has been in business since the early 60s. We are second generation operators and some of our guests have been coming for 40 years and they are second and third generations that have been coming here to explore our area and fish and enjoy the outdoors. What can I say about our cottages is they offer whatever it is you're looking for. You want to sit and read a book, you can sit and read a book. They offer all the amenities that you want, but it's like camping in a cottage. The McKay Island Lighthouse was built in, in 1907 to serve the timber industry. The lighthouse offers the lapping waves, the sunrises, and you can observe the lake freighters and the occasional beaver swim by. It uh, is open all seasons, offering two double beds and a set of bunk beds. It is the only housekeeping lighthouse that you can drive to in Ontario. People come back to our resort because we offer a unique experience and they're coming back because they are coming back as a friend. The first time they were a tourist. Though I love do-it-yourself fishing, I also believe that getting the advice and knowledge of a local fly shop or even a guide is important. Today, Tim and I have hired local guide, Adam Valley, who has thorough knowledge of local waters. Adam owns Angling Ogoma, and for years, I've used him for his services to help me get onto fish quickly. He will help us understand what the fish are looking for, where they are in terms of depth, and what impact weather and time of the season will have. To start our day, Adam has taken us on a quick 40 minute drive to a local lake here in Algoma country. The weather has changed and we're now experiencing intermittent heavy rainfall. This should be both interesting and exciting. Okay, Tim, so here in Northern Ontario, these bass really like to congregate around these main lake shoals. Right now we're fishing a rock hump with some weed transition out to deep water right now which gives these, the deep water allows those fish that deep water access and then they have a feeding flat that they can jump up on. The bait are gonna congregate around all the weed in the rock this time of year and it's just a perfect place for those bass to ambush them. All right, so, so what, I, what I'm fishing with here is a, is a six weight rod, intermediate line, and uh, I, I guess about six feet of uh, 10 pound test, 3X uh, leader material. And then I, I have a, a, cloud, a chartreuse and white clouser minnow on here and uh, just, you know, known to be a saltwater fly, but also a tremendous bass fly. Uh, really can't go wrong. I'm in the front of the boat right now. Uh, Colin's in the back and he's he's back there using, I think he's got a seven weight rod, but intermediate line and a Scotty's McFly on there. And, and pretty much doing the exact same thing as I'm doing up here. And uh, just covering the water. Got him? Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna say he's got, we got a grown one here. So basically exactly what I was just saying, that, right fish is, that. that fish is right up there in that rock weed transition. This time of year, you know, they, the fish really like to concentrate on these main lake shoals because there's a lot of bait around them that start congregating. The, the weather's starting to get a little cooler. The bait's starting to really ball up. And I think you got a good one here, buddy. Yeah, it looks like it. I think you might beat your two and a half pounder. Yeah. Nice job. Oh yeah, he's a fatty, huh? Yeah, nice job. Right oh, oh, lucky, lucky, lucky. We got him though. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Oh, that's a nice one, yeah. Yeah, here you go. I like it. Try out your, your three, that's a high three, close to four pound Algoma smallmouth.
We fished this location on the lake for a little while without much success. So Adam suggested we head to a set of narrows where there's some current flow. Upon arrival, Adam recommended we start with poppers, casting to the edges. It didn't take long for us to connect. Oh, oh there he dog! Was. You're right back on it, give it yep. another pop. <laughs> nice, Colin. That's not a small one. Nope. They're here. Nice. Oh, he's on the little bug though. Really? Yep. Yeah, Boy, I just they... I just saw the popper up above that little bug. I wouldn't say they've been uh, pounding it all day. So no. That makes sense that they would get the dropper for sure. I think you got a good one here, Tim. Yeah. Hope the knots are all good on that little bug. <laughs> oh, he's just got it. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Coming towards you. Oh, that's a real nice one, isn't it? It is. Nice fish, Tim. Oh, thank you. Great man. man. <laughs> Sorry, up. Buddy. Yeah. Uh, oh, fly popped out. There you go. Oh, Tim. Adam. Thank you. Oh, man. Here's your Look first. at that. Holy smokes. Gorgeous fish, buddy. Yeah. Well, that is Good absolutely my uh, biggest smallmouth to date by a lot and it, it took the dropper we had a, a little dropper behind a, a popper like 18 inches behind the popper and uh, he went for the little fly that is super cool well the weather has again dealt us a bad hand yet thanks to adam's valued advice we did catch some fish as all anglers know no matter where you go Weather is the usual culprit when dealing with tough fishing conditions. However, having some success, given the circumstances, we feel good about what was accomplished. Even more importantly, as Shakespeare once stated, it's better to fish than not fish. We woke up to foggy and rainy conditions. Another front had moved in overnight. Thankfully, we had booked another day with Adam, so there was hope that we would locate cooperative smallmouth on one of the local lakes or rivers. So, so what we're dealing with here today is uh, frontal and post-frontal conditions, and uh, the bass can be a little fussy uh, with those conditions. So what we've got is we got a little little dropper fly off the back, a little balanced leech, and it's in uh, behind a nice nice big popper. So the idea is that the the popper will, will get their attention, but if they're a little hesitant, you know, um, that they're going to take the smaller bug uh, r rather than go all the way up and commit to the big popper. Uh, you know, it could be one or the other. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's on the dropper again, too. I didn't, yeah, I didn't. Well, that is a nice, nicer fish, definitely. Like today, when it's pouring, Tim? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm switching. <laughs> come, come on up, buddy. 
Oh, oh that's, that's nice better one. than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Little teeny leech powder. Look the top of his mouth. Got him? Yep. Nice job. Yeah. Oh, he's got friends, Colin. He's got friends. Okay. I'll bring up my fly. Where is he at? Where are the They're friends? Off at? This side of him. Okay. Oh yeah, I like the look of that one. Got him. Got one. Yeah. So that was really cool because. Tim was hooking a fish and fighting him in, and Adam said, friends, he's got friends. He said, throw out here. And I threw out my uh, wool-headed uh, strip leech and got one of the fish that followed to take. About the same size, looks like, eh? He's just a tiny bit bigger, but double-headers are always fun. Yeah, gotta love that. I'm, gonna, I'm taking any fish on a day like today, Colin. Yeah. What an epic day, given the conditions often lashed by pounding rain and winds, yet we were able to connect with some quality smallmouth bass. Adam's guiding skills and in-depth understanding of the fishery have really paid off. He was worth every penny to us and certainly ensured we had a good day on the water. Day four of our Algoma adventure. The weather has changed yet again. This time though, we have bright blue skies and cool temperatures, typical September weather. Often bluebird skies signal a cold front and tough fishing, but Adam believes we can still have a great day. So, so Adam, what, what's going on here today? Uh, where are we? Well, Tim, today we got a little bit better, better weather conditions. So we decided that we're gonna try and come up this little bit of a creek mouth. The thing that happens this time of year is these, the bait fish are gonna migrate up these type of creeks and the smallmouth are actually gonna follow them. So since we got a little bit of wind in the forecast today, we're gonna try and hide out and see if we can get some of these river smallmouth. Okay, so we got to watch for friends here. So just, just throw one back in behind him, Tim. Okay. And let's see if uh, he has any friends around with him. That's a decent fish, Colin. Good job. Scotty McFly. Yeah. Boy, Colin, you were really moving that fly too. That was yeah. uh, coming that's fast. Gonna, that's gonna tell us a story. Great fish. Scotty in the mouth. Beautiful. Look at the stripes on it too. That's a nice, nice looking fish. Uh, so we're up in this little river here. A really neat spot to fish. We're, we're just casting, short cast to structure over by the shoreline. And, and you, it's clear water, you can see the fly, you can see the structure on the bottom and just, just waiting for those, those bass to come darting out and taking your take your fly. We're also fishing deep in uh, the center of the channel and heavily weighted fly down down there to, to see if we can dredge something up from below. I don't know, I think it's just so much fun when you can see the fish come up and take the fly. Oh yeah, 
That's nice a good one. Oh, he's got friends. He's got friends. Okay. He's got friends. I'm ready. Oh, nice one with him. Bring him up. Whoa, he's still he's not done. Get away from that structure. Now, where did that fish come? Out in the middle? Yep. Okay. Not from the structure. It was out. Off, off right the off the end, end of off, it? Off the end of it. Okay. You got him hooked good. Yep. That's a nice fish. Nice job. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, man. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a better. slob right there. That's, that's nice, better. That's a four pounder. Oh, baby. Nice job, Colin. Thanks. Right, you want to grab him? Sometimes it seems like I'm really dialed into the right retrieve, the right fly pattern, etc. And I'm hooking into fish, but that doesn't mean I get to land them. It's a real oh. No! Well, so we kind of given up on the river. We just weren't getting much of anything up there. And on our way back down, just kind of fishing away and found, started getting some fish deeper in the channel and more on uh, big, big streamers and uh, like a Scotty's McFly here, kind of kind of matching the hatch, wouldn't you say, with the bait fish that are in Absolutely. here? Absolutely, like we've seen all the, the small minnows when we were coming in, you know, the glass minnows or stuff like that. So that's definitely seemed to be the ticket. All of our bites have come on the Scotty today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, down a little deeper and a little slower retrieve and they're just a little shy, but uh, we're, get, we're getting fish. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's a little bit post frontal too because the bite is very subtle. They're still swinging up to really start actively feeding. I think this afternoon's gonna be good. Strip to that. Strip, 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 strip. Drop it. There he is. He's got it. Nice. Good job. Right good eat. Road. Nice eyes, Tim. There's another one behind him, Colin. Oh, he's a big one behind yep. him, Colin. I think that's a much better fish, too, honestly. Yeah. It is a much better fish. This lift. Perfect. Oh, that's a pretty one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Good eyes. That, that was great seeing that one down there Good and being eyes. able to cast to it. And, uh, there you go, buddy. Yeah, not, not a huge fish, but... Uh, we yeah. want the one that was with him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we could see another one swimming right beside him and tried to keep the fish in the water so maybe Colin could get the second one, but uh, it was definitely a much, much larger fish. That one's still good though. We decided to end the day early and head back to Bruce Bay Cottages to enjoy the sun on this beautiful September day. Before dinner, Tim and I went to the lighthouse where we could do some fly time or properly stated, Tim taught me how to properly tie some exceptional smallmouth bass patterns. Tim really liked some of the flies we successfully used these past few days. So he began by tying the deadly Scotty McFly, which works well for bass, but also trout, steelhead, and other species. This fly that I'm about to tie is a Scotty's McFly, and up here in Algoma country, it, it just, probably our most productive fly uh, this past week. Really incredible uh, how the fish respond to it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it starts with a Mustad uh, 9671 hook in size four. It's a 3X long hook, kind of perfect for it. But a uh, copper colored cone head can be tungsten, can be brass. Anyway, this fly uh, ha has to be durable. Just it it's going to take a beating and so a couple things to add a little weight to it make it more durable i'm using 0.02 lead free wire and i'm going to take i don't know 10 10 12 wraps of that lead free wire around the hook shank so what i like to do to make this really durable 
I'm going to take a little bit of super glue. I've pulled the cone head back. I'm just going to touch it to the shank behind the hook eye. Move the cone forward, then quickly slide those wraps up into the back edge of the cone. And super glue sets on pressure. And so you just keep the, the pressure on there for a little bit. Super glue sets, and it allows you to wind that little tag end in. And so we basically wasted no lead-free wire wrap, which can be a little hard to find, and helps to stabilize the bead, add some weight. Thread is kind of the color's important. This is chartreuse, 140 denier. Good, strong thread, but the chartreuse really makes the Scotty's McFly pop, if you will. Tail of the fly is going to be white marabou. It's going to kind of cover up those wire wraps and make a little ramp down to my hook shank. I'm going to grab two, two marabou feathers. Now, for, for this tail, I like it fairly long, maybe like a full hook and a half in length. I, I, I do like it long like that. Marabou stems bound down really well. I'm pulling up and toward me to keep, try to keep them on top of the hook shank as best I can. We're not worried about the number of thread wraps here either. Durability is way more important than, than anything else with these flies. Now, a little, little bit of flash, a little flashaboo. This is pearl crystal flash. Goes a long way. Tell you, at first, going down one side, the idea is to separate the strands on either side of that marabou tail. I'm going to snip these off just a little bit longer than the tail on the near side. And then bring them in and do the same on the far side of the fly. Real important though, to end with your tying thread right at the base of the tail. Okay, so right about there. Body of the fly is pearl mylar tubing. And I'm gonna go just a little bit longer, maybe a hook gap longer than the length of the hook. I'm gonna take my mylar tubing and slip it over the body of the fly, bring it back so it's it actually comes behind the hook bend a little bit. Pull your tying thread forward, take a wrap or two around, and then snug that down tight. Now, if you have one, a, a large whip finish tool really helps here to get around that, that mylar tubing. We're going to use that, and so we definitely don't want to cut it off. Four or five turn whip finish. Seat that knot really, really well. And then snip your tying thread free. And for durability, absolutely drop of head cement to saturate those wraps back there. Let that sink in and dry. All right, so I have my mylar tubing on there. That's going to be the body of the fly. I'm going to take my tying thread and get it started once again on the hook shank again. Two or three times around, then snug it tight right behind that cone. First thing we're going to do is tie in another. I'm only going to go with a single here for the wing, just another mar white marabou feather. And I'm going to go about halfway down the tail. Let's call this the wing of the fly. Get that la lash down really well. Snip the excess off close. The nice thing about this fly is. It, you can be a little messy with it, and it's still going to work just fine. One of the things that we've noticed uh, in fishing this past week is how how the orange on this fly shows up incredibly well underwater and gets them all worked up and ready to eat. Going to get that maybe not quite as long on that orange. Treat it more as a as a throat rather than a wing. Snip the excess off. And then I am going to go back just a few more strands of crystal flash. Snip the far side to length. And I'm going to get those, make sure everything is locked down really, really well here. 
In fact, I'm going to saturate that with some head cement. Take this forward pointing uh, portion of mylar tubing and shove it back over top of the cone. And it kind of adds, you can spread it out a little bit. It adds this nice frilly little collar back there, a lot of shine, and really cleans up that, that area right behind the cone. And to keep it just so it doesn't fray too much, I'm gonna run a, just a little bead of head cement at the back edge of the cone, right around that, that mylar tubing kind of locks the tubing to the cone and also keeps it from separating any further. So that, that's Scotty's McFly. Uh, it unbelievably effective for smallmouth up here in Algoma country. Tim and I decided on our drive up to Algoma to create these wonderful fly tying videos to share between our respective YouTube channels. So if you want to see the full versions, Please go to our YouTube channels to get the full instructions on how to tie both the Scotty McFly and the Bronze Goddess. Day 5. Our last hours of fishing together before sadly heading home. The good weather continues. Stable is always desired for great fishing. Today is also our last chance to try and get Tim into a bass of at least five pounds. So, for this river fishing in here in the estuary, what we're using with these Scotty McFlies uh, are two different lines that are perfect. And it's, it's related exactly to what streamer fishermen do in rivers, say in Montana, where they're casting fairly large flies. I'm using an intermediate, it's a full intermediate line, so it's sinking at one and a half to two inches. I've got about a four foot leader going to my fly, so I'm able to cast this right up into structure, right against the bank, start stripping it out, giving it pauses, and I'm not snagging up. But at the same time, I can let the fly, if I give it big long pauses, let that fly line go down and get the fly quicker to the, the bottom where some of the fish seem to be. For Tim, He's using a full sinking line. It's uh, really easy to cast, really good for short casts, or you can just flick the fly. Again, he's using a fairly short leader of 10 pound uh, test uh, material, and it's um, going down about five inches per second. Perfect with the Scotty McFly, or if he wanted to, he could go to something like a sculpin pattern, put it near the bottom. He's not going up as deep as I am with the cast, generally speaking, and then bringing it out because the fish actually aren't in the structure. They're out on the deeper edge. So his line's actually a little bit better in terms of getting down to where the fish are with his fly. Uh, we both have weighted flies, but what I have to do to compensate for that in this intermediate is just count it down a bit more and let it sink. But both are performing well to make short casts as well as long casts in this one. There we go, fish. So that's not, there's a bigger one right behind the boat. Um, this isn't a big one. Okay, put it there. You're on top of mine. Okay, got it down. He's got it, he's seen it. No, he's not. Give him a sec, give it a flick. He's on it. Good, oh, got him. Yes. Double header. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go boys. <laughs> this is How so fun is much that? fun. Oh, and we're not even going back. I said, you got the bigger fish, Tim. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Who says that bass don't fight? Look at this. Oh. Wow. Current fish, man. I thought this guy was smaller than what he is. <clears throat> it's a bigger fish. <laughs> He's thick. I know. Nice. Oh. Oh no! I'm trying to lose them for you. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. Oh, <laughs> there we go, buddy. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right, I got my fly. Oh, out. I thought I boned that at first, man. Did, did you see him? How fast he wanted that fly? Yeah. Look yeah. at this. Oh, there's like. 
Where do you get this type of fishing? This is insane in this river. Wow. Oh, Colin. Look at that. Cheers, bro. <laughs> Go fairly quick. Look at that. Yeah. And we're sight fishing. We're seeing the fish. They're coming in, feeding on bait fish. And I, I just can't. This is this. Okay. <laughs> Let's get him back in the water. Yeah, I'm gonna let this guy go. All right. Okay. Mine's ready to go. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. There you go. <laughs> is this not fun? Oh, that was too cool. Streamer fishing, sight fishing in a river. Adam, this is so, so much fun. <laughs> wow. Tim, thank you. I've had a great week with you. Learned a lot about fly tying. And of course, everybody, if you get a chance, go to his uh, YouTube channel, Tightline Videos. Correct. And Scotty McFly's in there. A whole bunch of great patterns from Atlantic salmon to saltwater, nymphine, dry flies, and especially a lot about technique, right? Yep. And now you're going to see a lot of smallmouth patterns. <laughs> <laughs> And Adam, of course, thank you very much. We appreciate your help this week. You really saved the day. And for everybody here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the water. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.